All right, so what's our housekeeping stuff? If you're joining us on Facebook, make sure that you comment watching live, unless you're catching the replay, then make sure that you comment that you're watching the replay. Watching live gets you two entries to the prize wheel for tonight and one entry for next week. Watching the replay just gets you one entry for next week. So you still get an entry and we've had people in a wheel full of names with only one, their name on there, they've still won prizes. So by all means, one does not mean you won't get anything, uh, but we want you to have as many chances as possible. Um, the other thing is that if you're joining us with Zoom, um, like dad was concerned about his picture being on there, uh, we do post these to YouTube. So if you don't want your face seen by the adoring public of our channel, um, you should probably turn off your video. Um, if you don't want your voice heard, turn off your mic. Or if you have a lot of background noise, like when I've got kiddos around or if you've got animals and stuff, having your mic muted might be good just for background noise reasons. Um, I think that's it. Oh, also if we're talking about something and under the comments, um, you post tips or tricks or personal stories or things like that, that also gets you prizes into the prize wheel as does sharing our videos um, as does tagging friends in our videos, anything that you do to help promote us and build us up and help us with teaching, you know, your tips and tricks and comments and ideas are always welcome. They help us with teaching and sharing our oily experiences. Um, all of those things get you comments into the prize wheel. So I think that's it for housekeeping. Did I forget anything? <laughs> all right. So who wants to go first with this week we're discussing Holiday vitality recipes, I think is what we called, <laughs> called our topic for tonight. I think you were going to do like a main, a main course sort of thing. Who's, were you doing ham? I have ham and I have an, inf an infused, a turkey something injection, injection sauce. Turkey injection sauce, I think is what it's called. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe you could start. And I then start. Because yeah. you've got desserts, right? So are you going to wrap us up? You know, like, oh yeah, I've got the I've desserts. Got, <laughs> I'm dessert, and then I've got some like pumpkin spice coffee. Mm -hmm. Ooh, if you like that coffee. With and coffee is typically had with dessert, so that works. Exactly. All right, I'll start us up. I also have a beverage, and sometimes people enjoy a beverage while waiting for the food to finish cooking. So I'll start with that. I'll start with the beverage and then move into... Oh, my web page is gone. Oh, wait, hang on. You guys, I'm not kidding. The number of tabs I have open, it's amazing my computer doesn't crash. All right, so I love apple cider. Growing up, we had apple trees. And one of my favorite memories, not quite this time of year, it's a little bit late, but more like September and October, was going to the um, apple press. This guy had an apple press in his garage and they had an orchard for apples and they would press their own cider. But we would pick up our apples and we'd take like the whole back of the van or the back of the truck was full of bags and buckets of apples and we'd press our own cider. And then for weeks, like my dad would have this chest freezer like full of apple cider that was frozen. And for weeks we would have hot apple cider. We've had cold apple juice. It's not alcoholic cider, obviously. It's It was apple juice. But um, I loved it. And um, when we got really fancy, like around the holidays, you can buy those cinnamon sticks and we'd stick one of those in there and that was, that was real classy. We'd get out the good mugs and everything so we'd have warm cinnamon apple cider. Um, so this recipe, um, now that I'm not at home and don't have apple cider sitting in my freezer in the basement, um, this is a really wonderful recipe. It's a little bit more grown up, still alcohol free, but it's a little bit more swanky. Um, so this is, you take six cups of apple cider or apple juice two cups of pineapple juice, and then five drops of clove vitality, five drops of cinnamon bark vitality, and five drops of tangerine vitality. You add all of it to a three-quart pot, and then you turn the stove on to medium and heat it until it's warm, and then serve and enjoy. There's some debate about like essential oils losing their health potency, and especially vitality oils like the nutritional benefits of oils when you heat them. So like baking oils in cookies, they tend to lose some of that. So me personally, when I do this, I heat the apple cider and the um, pineapple juice. 
I heat those and then I add the oils very last and then stir it in, stir for like a minute or two just to make sure the oils are well incorporated and then I serve it or drink it myself. Um, so I don't know if they're really retaining nutritional value, you're still adding them hot, but I'm not like actively cooking the oils. So again, that's a debatable topic. I mean, really for this recipe, you're just adding those oils for flavor. You're not adding them for nutritional value, but why waste nutritional value that you can get out of there, right? So I love apple cider. So that's one of my recipes there for while you're waiting for food to cook. So now I'll go to my main dishes. This is a turkey injection sauce. You've got, oh, hang on. This is like really small. Let's see if I can make this bigger. There we go. You've got four tablespoons of butter, one cup of chicken broth. I just use the stuff from the store because I've got little kids and I don't have time to make my own chicken broth. Although Luke is working on it. He's got some chicken bones upstairs. He's going to be making his own homemade chicken broth. So who knows? Um, we've got two teaspoons of garlic powder. You've got two drops of oregano vitality, two drops of thyme vitality, four drops of lemon vitality, two drops of black pepper vitality, and one teaspoon salt. You melt the butter in a saucepan and you add all the ingredients except for the salt and mix it well. You add the salt mix add salt until the mixture has a slight but not overpowering salt flavor. You just want that little bit of a hint to enhance the flavors. You don't want to overpower it with, whoa, salty turkey. You remove this mixture from the heat and allow it to cool enough to work with it and load it into that meat injector thing, the giant squeegee that we used in the bath of those squirt guns as kids. <laughs> um, and then like that, waiting for it to be workable is probably five to six minutes because you don't want it like boiling where the meat injector will hurt your hands. Um, then it says using a hypodermic needle, which I don't have. I've got the base for injector. <laughs> you inject the broth into the turkey and you concentrate mainly on the breast. Of course, I like dark meat, so I <laughs> Luke has more on the dark meat, but Luke likes the turkey breast, so I should probably do some more on there. And then you do this. They suggest doing it before roasting or frying your turkey. Honestly, I make probably two and a half of this recipe and I will put that on the turkey before and then about halfway through cooking and then that little bit like that half is like just probably 10 minutes before the turkey is done so that it's still like glazed and nice looking and then you've got otherwise you can like kind of like stick it back in there and reuse it if you don't want to make this recipe multiple times. This is for a 12 to 14 pound turkey. Um, the turkey we've got right now I think is 16 pounds. So obviously you'll want to change your ratios a little bit. Like my, I use more sauce because we have more turkey. And then I also use some of this in the gravy, but I'm not going to steal that away because Anne is discussing gravy. Anne, do you want to take gravy right now? And then I can come back to my ham. You bet. I was going to say, oh, this would be a good jumping board <laughs> right into my ultimate gravy. Um, I really wasn't a big, huge gravy fan for the longest time, but as time has gone on and I've explored different, different recipes, especially those with the Vitality oils being part of them, I've actually become more of a fan of gravy. Um, you know, so this is, this is one that's really kind of, kind of cool. Um, it's got you take a half a cup of butter, um, half a cup of einkorn flour, which is, um, you know, something that Young Living has a, a whole bunch of different einkorn um, products. And, um, or if you didn't have that, you could use just regular flour. You don't, don't have to be like, oh man, I don't have einkorn flour, so I can't make this. Um, and four cups of chicken stock. Um, I'm with you, Tessa. I even though I don't have littles at home, I am a pretty busy person, so I don't have time to do my own chicken stock either. So I'm just going to buy it from the store. Um, you take a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. I would, I would probably dial that back just a little bit. Um, I, I prefer to go a little bit more, you know, to the 
conservative side of the salt and because people can always add more to it if they want to. Um, that's just kind of been my practice is, you know, if it's not quite enough, you can add more versus the other way where you can't really remove it after it's in there. Um, and then you're gonna take two drops of sage vitality oil, one drop of thyme vitality and one drop of black pepper vitality. So you're just gonna, you know, you'll, you'll melt, melt your butter, whisk the flour um, into, into the butter. You're gonna put in your um, chicken stock and incre increase, you know, to a boil on high until it thickens to the point that you would like it to be. Um, and you're gonna stir in your salt and the garlic powder. You're gonna simmer uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then put in your essential oils and then serve warm. So you, that's really good on, you know, for that turkey, um, you know, it really kind of gives it kind of that nice boost, um, you know. So I've expanded my horizons with the gravy thing. <laughs> Back to you, Tessa. All right. So the next one that I've got is lemon butter green beans. So I'm not a very big bean person. I'm not a fan of really any kind of beans, lima beans, butter beans, kidney beans. I, I don't like beans. Um, but this recipe is actually very, very good. I will eat these. These are good. I don't like green bean casserole either, which my sister thinks is bizarre because, you know, who doesn't like green beans and cream and mushroom soup? I don't, I don't like it. But lemon butter green beans are really, really good. And they're fairly healthy for you, aside from maybe the butter. Um, <laughs> so this one is a pint of green beans. You want the ends trimmed off. They're using fresh green beans, not canned green beans. So you snip off the ends. And then there's, again, like Anne, I would take back the salt because you can add more. I thought this was salty the first time I made it. So the second time, I went about half. This recipe calls for a tablespoon of coarse salt plus more for seasoning. I thought it was too much. So I would start with like a teaspoon and a half probably. Um, and then they've got two tablespoons of butter and two drops of lemon vitality. So you fill a medium like probably two to three quart saucepan um, about three quarters of the way full of cold water you set over high heat and bring it to a boil. Then you add your salt and your beans. You cook with water. Um, you cook it until the water returns to a boil and the beans are tender. Luke likes his green beans a little bit more on the crispy side. He likes his noodles al dente, so having green beans a little bit more crunchy is good. Um, and I don't really like mushy green beans either, so I would do more to the three to four minutes, but four to five if you like them a little softer. Um, and then you remove them from the heat and you drain them. So immediately return the beans back to your saucepan and you add your butter and your lemon essential oil. Then you toss and season with salt and pepper. Then you transfer to your serving bowl and serve warm. Um, the other thing about this recipe is that it doesn't keep for long. Like you can't pre-make this and hold it in the fridge, um, but it doesn't take super long. So um, this would be one recipe you'd wanna make kind of as people are getting ready to get to the table and getting ready to sit down and that kind of a thing. Um, I was supposed to do my ham next, but my page didn't load. So, and do you have another one you wanna share now that I did my green beans and while we hopefully get my ham page to load because my recipe is currently doing this. Wee, loading, loading. Sure, I would love to. Thank you. Thanks for saving so my bacon. <laughs> So one of my absolute favorite, favorite, favorite dishes to have um, Thanksgiving, well, not really just Thanksgiving, but is sweet potato. Sweet potato, anything. I love sweet potatoes. And so um, I actually came across this sweet potato casserole um, that I actually haven't tried yet, but I think I'm going to try it for Thanksgiving because it just sounds fabulous. In my world, sweet potato casserole is like a slab of pie. 
I, I just, I love sweet potatoes. Um, so you're gonna basically, this is gonna serve like 12 people. So I'm obviously going to dial this back um, because I don't wanna be eating all of this sweet potato myself <laughs> for days and days. Um, but if you were going to be serving 12 people, um, you would take four cooked sweet potatoes, uh, two eggs, quarter cup of milk, third cup of maple syrup, one teaspoon of vanilla, half a cup of butter, three drops of lemon vitality, and two drops of cinnamon vitality. You're going to mix that all together. You're going to put it in a nine by 13 inch uh, baking pan. And then for the topping, you take this isn't by any means low calorie either, by the way. You're going to take one cup of brown sugar. <laughs> it's the holidays. Who needs low calories? Exactly. Janelle's about to overload us with dessert exactly. recipes. <laughs> A third cup of flour, one cup of chopped pecans. Um, so there's some protein. Um, one third cup of melted butter and three drops of cinnamon vitality. So once you've got your, you know, the first part, the potatoes and the first six ingredients all in the baking dish, you're gonna take that topping and you're gonna to spread that topping over that the potato mixture, drizzle the melted butter over the topping and you're gonna bake it at 350 for about 30 minutes or until brown and bubbling. Um, so I'm looking really forward to this lovely little dish. Um, my husband, he's, He's getting more on board with sweet potatoes, but he still likes his, just his regular, give me some mashed potatoes, we're good to go. Um, so sometimes we, sometimes we have both, um, but sweet potato casserole has been one of my absolute favorites for Thanksgiving, hands down. So I will uh, make sure that both of these recipes are posted um, in our comments. And so that others can can enjoy um, these recipes as well. Yum, yum, yum. Sweet potato. I love sweet potatoes. I never used to. That's one of those foods that as an adult I like. As a kid, I never did. But now I'm like, man, I was missing out. All right. So now that my page is loaded <laughs> and my computer is not freaking out, I have orange glazed honey ham. And Luke actually made ham this evening. Um, he didn't follow this exact recipe because my husband never follows recipes. He goes off on his own, but this recipe is also delicious. <laughs> so you have a six pound ham with bone in, you have one cup honey, you have a fourth of a cup maple syrup, you have a half of a cup orange juice, you have two drops cinnamon essential oil, you have two drops of clove vitality essential oil and three drops of orange vitality essential oil. So what you're gonna can do is combine your honey, your maple syrup and your orange juice into a double broiler and stir until combined and bring to a boil. If you don't have a double broiler, I learned this hack. You just kind of stack like one of those metal bowls on top of another like saucepan with water in it you just don't want your ingredients like one layer away from your burner. So you just create like a water, you're like steam cooking a bowl of stuff. So that's basically what a double broiler is. So not complicated. If you don't have one, don't go and spend a fortune on it. I functioned for years without an actual double broiler. Um, so then you remove from heat and add the essential oils. Then you're going to line your roasting pan with foil and place the ham in the center. Please don't skip this part because whoever does your dishes will hate you if you forget to put the aluminum foil in there. Because of the sugar in this recipe, it will stick to the pan. So please remember the aluminum foil. That was a miserable evening. <laughs> so pour the glaze on top of the ham. Then you cook the ham as directed on the package. I've never seen a variance in that, but that's what it says. I think all hams cook about the same. For the last hour of cooking, you want to baste this glaze on the bottom of the pan and repeat until the ham is cooked thoroughly. So again, I just use my like little baster wand thingy, the syringe looking thing. Um, and then for the last 15 minutes of cooking, you want to broil, not boil, broil until golden brown. Luke loves the broiler. 
he thinks it's the most wonderful tool ever. I literally only use it for this recipe. <laughs> I don't even really know what a broiler does aside from like, it cooks from the top instead of all around. <laughs> that's, that's all I know. But this recipe is incredible and makes me glad I have a broiler. <laughs> You laugh it up, Anne. You laugh it up. I see you. I see you. You're just so cute, Tessa. <laughs> do you use your broiler? What do you use it for? Well, if you're making, say, a lemon meringue pie, you want to just lightly brown the meringue, you would use the broiler. I've never made lemon meringue pie. Maybe I should try it. You don't want it in there too long, though. Because <laughs> you'll, like, burn your meringue. I've tried meringue twice, and it hasn't turned out well. Like, those meringue cookie things or whatever, they, they didn't. It, it was horrible. Anyway, speaking of cookies, now we're transitioning over to Janelle, who has a plethora of desserts for us, I believe. Oh, and her coffee creamer. Well, Tessa says plethora, but really, I only have one. But it's very versatile. So this recipe is like, um, it's like a chocolate truffle, but there's so many things that you can do with it. So it calls for a half a cup of coconut milk, it calls for 16 ounces of um, chocolate. I think it's, I think the recipe called for like dark chocolate. I prefer like a milk chocolate or something. Yeah, I like more sugar. So, so use whatever chocolate you like. Um, and then it calls for a teaspoon of vanilla and some sea, like half a teaspoon of sea salt. I generally, unless I'm making homemade bread, I don't add salt to really anything. Um, yeah, if you're making homemade bread, don't forget the salt because the yeast will just go crazy. I maybe have done that a time or two. <laughs> but um, so it calls for a half a teaspoon of like sea salt. Whether or not you want to put it in there, it's totally up to you. And then... Um, it calls for five drops of peppermint vitality. And so what you do is you heat up the coconut milk. And when you when it's just on the cusp of boiling, you'd mix in, slowly stir in the chocolate chips. And then, um, okay, so you do that. And then you add in your vanilla, your, co your um, peppermint, drops of pepper peppermint oil, and then you can add in whatever you want. Like you could add in coconut, like coconut flakes. You could add in nuts. You could add in whatever you want. Or you could just keep them as like the chocolate truffles. They're really, really sticky though. Um, so it takes a little bit of diligence to get them rolled into balls. Do you coat uh, them in like baking cocoa to keep them from sticking to each other? You could do that. Or you could coat them in like powdered sugar. Or, or I saw that they, um, you can coat them in, in actually like coke the coconut flakes, like coat them in that, or even like roll them in like really finely diced up nuts of some sort. I'm just gonna make sure I'm not missing any ingredient here. I'm just going off of memory. Let me just make sure here. Yes, whisk until smooth, okay. So the big thing is that before, so you're going to melt the, you're going to melt the chocolate in a double boiler, just like what Tessa said, until smooth, heat the coconut milk to almost boil, almost boiling, and then add to the chocolate. So I missed the double boiler part. Add the vanilla, the salt, if you want, and the peppermint, and then whisk to, until smooth. And then you want to refrigerate for like an hour until hardened, but still soft. So it's going to be like, um, it's not going to be really firm. It's going to be almost like a somewhere between like a dough consistency and like a mousse consistency, like some somewhere in between there. But refrigerate it. If you fr refrigerate for about an hour, and if it, it doesn't feel like it's the consistency is good for you to even make into a ball, refrigerate it a little bit longer. But usually about an hour. So you make it into balls, and then you can roll it in whatever you want. Um, you could do sprinkles if you wanted to. My kids like that. So you could roll it in sprinkles. You could do powdered sugar. You, you could do cocoa powder. You could do nuts, um, whatever you wanted to do. And then you get the little, you get the peppermint um, taste as well. Another good vitality put in these is orange. 
Um, you can use orange vitality and that gives it kind of a nice little citrus slash chocolate um, mixture. And, and um, yeah, so that is one dessert that's very versatile that you could do. And it's super easy. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not a baker. I don't know. Well, these like, seriously, guys, you just heat up the ingredients, you mix them together, refrigerate and like roll into balls and then roll into whatever you want. So like no baking required. And like Tessa said, the double boiler, like if you don't have one, you could easily make shift one. So. Iris and I just made orange chocolate chunk cookies last week. Mm. So it was basically chocolate chip cookies, but then we added some orange vitality oil in there. Mm. Oh, that was good. So now you're talking about adding orange vitality to your truffles. And I'm like, Ooh, I got to make some of those. Those cookies were good, but man, as truffles, I yeah. bet you that would take it up a notch. <laughs> the thing that I've done with orange before is I've made like a cream cheese fruit dip. And I oh, think it's like yeah. cheese, powdered sugar, orange vitality, and I want to say like some whipped cream and I like made the whipped cream from scratch too, which is kind of fun. You just need like whipping cream and vanilla basically and pretty much. that's pretty much it. But, um, and then you mix all the ingredients, you know, like melt the cream cheese and you mix all the ingredients and then you add the orange vitality. And that is fantastic. I made that for um, a get together I had um, at the, at our old house and people just loved it. And so it pairs really, really well with, you could either do it with like chocolate, like you could have like chunks of chocolate and dip that, or you could have, um, we did fruit, or you could do like a, like a sweeter cracker slash cookie sort of thing. Um, if you wanted to do like graham crackers or gosh, you could even, you could do really whatever um, to dip it with. So that's another good one. I just remembered that. I gotta make that. You're talking about that whipped cream. I'm in charge of making pies for Thanksgiving this year. We're going by Luke's folks. And I made a pie. I don't have peppermint extract anymore. <laughs> so I'm I was given a recipe for a mint mint chocolate chip. It's basically an Andy's candies pie. And I was like, I don't have peppermint extract. But you know what I do have? <laughs> I have peppermint vitality. So it had like homemade whipped cream. So like you're saying, it had the heavy whipping cream and then vanilla and then other other pie stuff. And I got to the peppermint extract and I'm like, all right, let's do like five drops of peppermint oil. That sounds good. It's a little strong. It's a, it's a little minty, but I like mint and this pie is the bomb. I can't wait to share it with people. I had a little bit of filling left over and I ate it with a spoon. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> Karis is looking at me like what's wrong with you I'm like this is delicious that's funny um, all right share your creamer recipe though I want to hear about your coffee creamer my other one I'm gonna minimize you guys so I can tell you what the ingredients are okay so this is a spiced pumpkin creamer it's one third cup pumpkin puree two cups of almond milk a drop of clove vitality a drop of ginger vitality and a drop of cinnamon bark vitality and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. So you put all the ingredients in a blender, blend until smooth, and then you can transfer to an airtight container and store in the refrigerator. Um, you wanna shake it before each use. And I, it usually, I would say like the, it lasts about a week, like use it within the week. But if you are somebody who like loves their pumpkin spice latte, but wants to exonate all the sugar, I feel like like 50 grams of sugar or something ridiculous in there. And chemicals. There's a lot of chemicals in yeah. those flavorings at coffee shops. Right. So if you still want like the same flavor, but want to exonate some of that extra stuff that's not very good for you, um, this would be a good alternative. So that yeah. delicious. It is very delicious. And I'm not, um, I don't, I, my problem with pumpkin spice lattes is they're too sweet. Um, and this is perfect. So it gives you like that pumpkin flavor, which I like the pumpkin flavor, but you don't get like the over, um, overwhelming sugary sweet um, aftertaste. So if you are a person who likes to pair their coffee with their dessert, this would be, gosh, if you had some chocolate truffles and pumpkin spice coffee, 
Mm, that'd be good. Or pumpkin pie and pumpkin mm. spice guy. I have, I actually have a pumpkin pie recipe using oils too, but I don't have it written down, so I'm, I'm not going to try to share that from memory. <laughs> Y'all will be like, "What is this for a pie?" <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. I kind of wish we did this as a two week segment because as I was looking through recipes and trying to figure out what to share, I was like, "Ooh, this is a good one. Ooh, this is a good one." Like I've got one for mashed potatoes, and I've got one for. I, I've got lots of stuff. I can, I'm a little bit sad we're not doing this for two weeks, but that's okay. I'll share them in the group. We can just tease people right before Christmas, before they make their Christmas meals and share them. I like the way you think. This is, this is good. I like talking about food. <laughs> I like talking about food. Yeah, probably a little too much. <laughs> I love talking about food. <laughs> All right, does anybody else have anything they want to add this evening? No? All right, let me just check to see any comments or questions in the group, because if we have questions, we want to answer those as soon as possible. Nope. All right, I don't see any questions. So now we're going to go over to our prize wheel. Do we remember whose turn it is for prizes this week? I don't remember. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, all right. And Janelle, do you have anybody in your groups to add to the wheel? Not this week? All right. We have Wendy and Rodney and Emily and B all on here a whole bunch of times because y'all are faithful watchers live, and that is fantastic. So let me see if I can share my screen. <laughs> That's not what I want. Hang on. There we go. This one. Now you all get to see how many tabs I have open and you get to judge me. Uh, can, you, can you see? There. Can you see now? Yeah? Give me a thumbs up. Somebody? There we go. All right. You guys always mute yourselves when I'm like talking to myself over here. Okay, ready to spin the wheel and go. Yay, Emily, congratulations. That's exciting. Good deal. So Emily is our winner this week. Thank you for watching live and commenting. Does anyone else have anything to add or should we say good evening and have a happy Thanksgiving? I hope you all enjoy our recipes that we shared. You'll have to let us know in the comments under the video or personal messages how your recipes turn out and which ones you were most excited to try. Awesome. Good deal. Well, happy guys... Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you for joining good. us. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep. Bye, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.